Hi pen fans, this is your personal pen maker, Brian at the Edison Pen Company, edisonpen.com. I have something new to announce that I'm very excited and also quite proud of. Uh, we have recently engineered spiral ink windows, 3D printed spiral ink windows. Um, before I get too far into this, probably the best thing to do is just have a look at some photos. I'll get a, a video of it filling. It's a pretty cool concept. And then once we've seen that, I'll get into a lot more details about this. Have a look. All right, so this is a Menlo. Uh, at the beginning here, at least for the foreseeable future, this will only be available in the Menlo, and I'll discuss a bit more about that later. But um, the first one that I made, I decided that I wanted to make it completely minimal, completely solid black, so there's no band on this Menlo, there's no clip on this Menlo. What I wanted was that for the minimal portion of the pen, to be a nice contrast to the visual complexity of the ink window. So, and hopefully in that photo, you can see that there is a spiral uh, going uh, through that ink window, which really creates a very cool effect with uh, filling the pen and, and viewing the pen when it is filled. And here's just a second view of this Menlo with the cap removed. And then of course these will be on our Menlo draw fillers. So there's a photo showing the um, blind cap removed so you can see the uh, filling mechanism. And then here's the same pen that is filled. I think that uh, the, I have some better views uh, uh, later on the, in this video, but I think that you can see that when it's filled, it's going to follow that spiral throughout the ink window. And of course, probably the coolest thing about this is watching this pen fill. Um, now, I will get into the reasons later, but for the purposes of these designs, I probably won't recommend doing all demonstrators or all clear, um, where you know the entire pen is a clear material, or the entire barrel, at least, is a clear material. Again, I'll explain why later, um, but for now, I wanted to show you uh, a demonstrator filling with this method so that you could see, you know, from top to bottom what happens inside this barrel. And then here's an example of the pen filling in more of a configuration that I would recommend. And again, I'll explain that later, but my recommendation is not to use everything that is completely translucent in the entire barrel. So you can kind of see how this will fill um, uh, with only the ink view or the only the ink window visible. Okay, so let's have a look at what this um, ink window is all about. This is my 3D model for this part that we're using. And it's probably important to note so that there's no confusion. This portion here at the bottom is male threaded into the bottom of the barrel. And then this portion up here is male threaded into the top of the barrel. So these two portions are not visible. They're, they're you know, they're, they're uh, integral and they're put, they're, they're, they're made uh, this is essentially what is uh, creating the joinery between the top and the bottom of the barrel. So this shaded area here is what is actually visible. And I hope that this is apparent, but there is a tube going up the center and then the breather tube that um, comes off of the nib unit also goes up this center tube. So what that means is that when you fill the pen, the ink is going to travel through the breather tube up the center of this and then it will cascade down through these spirals. It does a little of both, of cascading down and also filling from the bottom. So it's kind of interesting when you watch this fill, um, it, it does a little of both. It cascades down and also fills from the bottom a little bit. And maybe this is apparent, but essentially what's going on here is this central tube goes all the way through. And then of course, 
the the spirals are completely independent of that tube. So they are separated from each other. The ink will come up the um, will come up this central tube and then find its way down into the spirals. So let me give you a little backstory and a little bit about how this came to be. Um, as far as 3D printing goes, of course, boy, there's so much innovation that is possible with 3D printing in all areas of manufacture, let alone just fountain pens. And we have been utilizing 3D printing concepts for years now, actually. Now, primarily that's with our uh, roll stops. So the spherical roll stops, our um, uh, serpent roll stops, um, and then our samurai sword roll stops. With the help of my friend, uh, fellow pen maker and jeweler Dan Ferlano, he has handled all of those and those have been 3D printed in wax and then the wax goes to a lost wax casting to create those sterling silver parts for us. And that's all great. So we've been using 3D printing for a while, but this concept of what I want to accomplish here has really been hatching for more than a year now. And there were some limitations that I wasn't going to do it unless I could get over these three things. And I'll get into more details of all three of them. One, and probably the most important, absolutely, is, I'll get into more details later because it may not make any sense right now, gas impermeability. Next would be stain resistance. I absolutely wanted to make sure that whatever resin, whatever material I was 3D printing was as stain resistant as our normal acrylics. Now, I'll get into a lot more details about stains, but that was my goal. It needed to be just as stain resistant as any other modern, normal acrylic that we use. The third thing was it needed to be easy to flush. So first, let's talk about this gas and permeability issue. And um, I, I think I can explain this in a, in a, in a very um, easy to understand way. When 3D printing is obviously done in layers, and instead of you know, cast acrylic is molten acrylic that is cured, and we know that it is completely gas impermeable because it's basically a solid uh, hunk of acrylic with no pores. And when I say pores, I mean that on a super, super microscopic level. When I was working with concepts of 3D printing to create some kind of an ink window like this, or any kind of a um, system where the ink reservoir was integral to the 3D printed part, that was the problem that I was having. In other words, if the ink reservoir was going to be made from something 3D printed, it had to be completely gas impermeable. So the limitations that I had is that a lot of the resins I was trying were not completely gas impermeable. What that means is they are liquid impermeable, so liquid will stay in this ink reservoir, but because it is not gas impermeable, gas could very slowly work its way into the ink reservoir. Um, now that's a problem because with a fountain pen, a fountain pen is essentially a controlled leak if you think about it. In order for a controlled leak to work, you can't have the reservoir allowing air or gas to get into the ink reservoir. If that happens, then ink will start to slowly weep into the feed and eventually weep out of the nib and eventually you've got a big mess in your cap. So you know, a lot of the concepts that I started with, I loved it, it looked great, and then I set the pen on my desk for four days or so and all of a sudden I've got a super saturated feed and I've got ink in the cap and I knew that the issue was that the material was not gas impermeable. It was not leaking ink but it was allowing gas to exchange. So gas getting into an ink reservoir is going to allow ink to basically leave, and that's a real problem. And of course, normal acrylics, ebonites, you know, conventional pen materials won't do that. That's why they're, they're, they've always been fantastic. Well, one of the reasons why they've always been fantastic pen materials. But I finally did find something that is gas impermeable. It's a resin that I'm using, and it's also printed at a layer thickness of literally a matter of microns. 
So I found that obstacle overcame. I, I found that I did overcome that obstacle, which was huge for me. It took me a long time to really figure that out. But there's no way that I was going to introduce a pen that once you fill it, you have to write with it every day or else, you know, the feed is going to become um, oversaturated and possibly leak. So I did overcome that and that was really the first major issue with 3D printing a part like this where the printed resin is a part of the ink reservoir. Now the next obstacle that I needed to, to uh, overcome in order to feel that I could introduce this product is stain resistance. Now, I'm never going to make a claim that this material will be 100% stain resistant to all inks out there. That would be foolish and it's just not realistic. After all, there are inks out there that will literally stain porcelain. And even with bleach or even with a lot of cleaners, it's not, sometimes impossible, if not difficult, to lift up. Uh, in our, um, in our uh, utility area where we flush nibs, we have a stainless steel sink and sometimes we get pens that come back with inks that have a reputation for being a little harsh or for being pretty stainy, is lack of a better term. And after we're done, you know, I noticed that those stains are on stainless steel for weeks, if not longer. So what I was after was a material that would at least give me the same qualities that our normal acrylics would so that you wouldn't see interior stains unless you're using an ink that, hey, you know, we all know there's probably inks that have a harsh reputation for staining, inks that are highly, highly saturated, crazy bright pinks, crazy bright reds, you know, uh, super saturated colors. Those are the ones that you really need to think about, about possibly staining any pen. Any pen that is clear, any pen that has, you know, interior that you could see or see through the pen, that's going to be a consideration for any pen. You know, if we're making just a regular demonstrator for any of our customers, I can never make promises that there will never be stains in those pens because it truly is ink dependent. So I will, let me get to the third topic of flushing, and then I will actually show you a lot of my test results as to how well this material is resisting staining. Now, next is ease of flushing. Um, I wanted to be able to engineer something that would have, I guess what I refer to as an open system. In other words, if you push water to flush the pen through one area, through one area, I wanted to exit another area so it's flowing through. You know, if I did a spiral, so if you can envision what I showed you with that graphic, there's a central tube going down the middle of the ink window, then the spirals come down below that. So what you can do with this, and I will demonstrate this later, is you can use a bulb syringe, you can shoot ink up the central tube, and of course it will then find its way down the, uh, the, the spiral. So it's a system where the ink is going, uh, sorry, the water is going in and flushing the ink out. It's coming in one side and going out another side, or I guess I should say it's entering one area and exiting another area, rather than having, you know, if you just, if you really tried to just have an, a spiral that ended in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an awkward design, it would be nearly impossible to introduce a liquid to clean and then also flush it out effectively so that it's going in, out, following the same path, and drawing ink out at the same time. So with that in mind, I'm now going to show you some of these videos of how the stain resistance compares on some inks that I uh, feel should not stain, and inks that, hey, you know what, we're, we're going to get into some of, the, some of the nasty ones and some of the harsh ones that do have a reputation for staining. And I want to be clear, I'm not putting down inks that will stain. Uh, I love that ink makers push the envelope. I love that they are doing new, innovative things. But with some of these inks, you just simply want to avoid, you know, these pens that maybe have clear portions or that would show those stains or decide which pen, you know, those should be in. Some people think that stains are character. If that's the case, no problem at all. But I think that most of my customers would like to avoid that. So let me get in some videos showing various, um, uh, v various inks and how they reacted to being flushed out. So what I'm starting with here is um, we're going to have two inks that I consider to be run-of-the-mill or safer inks that I would expect to flush out easily. 
and then we're going to move on to some that I would be surprised if they are flushed out. And of course, what I'm referring to is really highly saturated. So if you're, I mean, obviously I can't test every single ink out there, but if you're in doubt and uh, you're not sure whether or not an, uh, an ink has a reputation for staining, um, super highly saturated colors is what you'd like to avoid. And just so everybody knows, all of these inks were in these prototype pens for a period of two weeks and then were flushed out. First up is Waterman Serenity Blue. I think a lot of you may know that that's, that's my favorite brand of ink. I think that in all qualities, including stain resistance, it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's what we use to tune pretty much all of our nibs that, that go out. And I think you can see that it's resisting these stains very well. It's, it's, it's cleaning out very nicely. Now that extra stuff that you see around the threads, I'll address that later. This is an Ackerman blue-green. I'm not going to try and pronounce that, but you could see it in the caption. And this is the same Ackerman. Flushed out pretty nicely. Again, this is the same Ackerman. This is Pelican Edelstein Star Ruby. It's a pretty bright red. And I think you can see that it's probably not going to come out entirely. So that's a pretty good example of a really highly saturated red that may leave some redness inside the barrel. Noodler's Fox. Surprisingly cleaned out pretty well considering how incredibly red it is. Hiroshizuku Suji, I think I pronounced that correctly. Looks like it came out pretty nicely. Again, those spots on the threads or the edges, I'll address that later. Diamine Blue Velvet is a pretty saturated purplish blue. And it is leaving a little bit behind. Diamine Syrah. That's a purplish red. And it is leaving some, some notes of ink behind. And then here's the one that everybody probably was curious about, and there shouldn't be any surprises. Noodler's Bay State Blue. It's a fantastic color. It's an amazing blue, but it definitely does have some pretty high-level staining qualities. And now another thing that I wanted to cover is why not demonstrators? And maybe everybody already saw the reason why in those, you know, stain test videos, but the way this is engineered is that the 3D printed ink window is male threaded into the bottom portion of the barrel and male threaded into the top portion of the barrel. It doesn't matter, you know, there's nothing at all that can be done about this. Essentially if ink gets into this joinery in this area, it's going to, through capillary action, find its way into whatever thread it can um, until it's stopped. You know, we put these together with an adhesive. Once it's stopped by the adhesive, that's fine. It won't go any further. There's no leaks, of course. But it is basically impossible for really any ink to not do this. It's not a matter of staining. It's a matter of collecting. So if this looks okay to you, then great. You know, that's no problem at all. Like I said earlier, some people consider stains like this or ink collecting in that spot to be character. But if you'd like to avoid that, then I would recommend that, you know, you're looking at designs like this. This is chestnut ebonite. Any ebonite, of course, is going to be completely opaque. Uh, this is a type of, boy, I don't remember what we call this. This is a kind of like a silver and red striated, completely opaque. Um, this is a... Uh, violet flake 
again, opaque. It's not going to show that, 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 that stuff. Here is blue steel. You know, that's not going to show these issues. So I would recommend, if you want to avoid this kind of thing, to probably not do a demonstrator, probably not do a translucent material for, you know, the, 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 all the portions except for the ink window or the spiral ink window. Okay, now I would like to take a minute to talk about flushing these pens or this, this uh, ink window because it is a bit unique. And now maybe you got the whole idea by watching, you know, my demonstrations of the stain resistant qualities, but I still wanted to cover this. If you're, first of all, flushing the nib is the same as our other draw fillers. When you unscrew the section, you'll notice that the draw fillers do have, of course, a breather tube attached. That's, that's you know, that, that's a critical for the filling system to work. So you can take your bulb syringe, insert the tube down into the snout of the bulb syringe, and then squeeze, and you're going to flush out the nib perfectly fine. That'll work out great. Now. What I was doing previously, and I'll try and come in here a bit. If you look down inside here, that's that central tube that I was referring to. What you want to do is shoot water down that central tube, and once it goes into the reservoir, it's going to shoot its way back out the spiral. That's what I meant by an open system, if that's the right term. You know, the water is going in one spot leaving another spot so it's a continuous flow and it's going to continually move out the old ink. So you're really just going to take your, as I did in the, in the videos, you're going to take the, the bulb syringe and just put it right where that central uh, tube is. You're going to squeeze and that's going to bring the ink in, uh, well the water and the ink, in and then back out. The, the snout of this is not thick enough to make a seal right here. So when you put this on the central tube, you still have room for water to come out this portion of the pen, and it works really, really well. Now, the other thing that is very, very important about this is this breather tube. Well, you probably figure this out. Where does it need to go? It needs to go down that central um, that central uh, cylinder or that central tube there. So when you look inside here and you're going to reassemble this pen, of course you want to have a little silicone grease here. We provide that with all of our draw fillers just to make sure that the, the reservoir is sealed. And then you're going to make sure that that breather tube goes inside the inner tube. And when you do that, then of course you're in good shape. If you don't hit that inner tube, then you can kind of bind up the breather tube inside this, you know, this, this first portion of the reservoir and then the pen won't fill properly. So when you reassemble, just be sure that the breather tube goes down this central tube and you'll be in good shape. And then one topic I would like to cover, which I'm sure a lot of people are wondering about, is ink capacity. Um, now, one of the big features of our draw fillers, the nature of having a repeating piston that you know works on compression and vacuum with cycles, is that it has a much larger capacity than most self-filling pens. So our conventional draw fillers, our normal non-spiral draw fillers, have an ink capacity of two milliliters, and that's really big. You know, for a self-filling pen that is of regular size, I mean, of course, there's bigger ones out there, but usually those are engineered with long barrels specifically for a, a large ink capacity. But in a conventional pen design, two milliliters is pretty big. And again, that is our normal draw fillers, our non-spiral draw fillers. But you can imagine that this ink window is going to take up a lot of real estate inside the reservoir. So, and, and, and that is correct. So the, the, the ink capacity of this is reduced by one milliliter. So it is, you know, so from, from two milliliters to one milliliter. Um, a typical converter 
is going to have anywhere from 0 0.5, 0 0.6 milliliters. So this is roughly double a converter filler, but it still is significantly less half of what our uh, non-spiral uh, draw fillers have as far as ink capacity. So in this pen, I think that the benefit is obviously the cool factor. It's really, really cool if you ask me. Um, but the spiral really serves no utilitarian purpose at all, other than just looking really neat. So you can weigh the cool factor versus whether or not that ink capacity being lowered matters to you, but the ink capacity is about 50% of what our normal draw fillers are. Another item to cover is which models can this be on? As of publishing this video, which is May 2021, um, this is only available on our Menlo. Um, outside of the engineering of the, of the spiral window itself, the engineering of putting the ink window as part of the body of a pen is really, really complicated. It's a lot more complicated than what we do with a conventional ink window or a non-spiral ink window. So will this be offered on other models besides the Menlo? I don't know. As of now, I think the answer would be yes, but it might be in, in you know, it might it might be a longer time frame. So if you're if you're thinking about this and you'd like to, you know, discuss whether or not this can happen in a different model besides the Menlo, I can't make a promise, but as time goes on, perhaps I can get the engineering done on other models for this pen. But as of now, only the Menlo. Okay, so I think that covers everything that I need to cover. I hope that everybody is excited and, and, uh, and likes this concept as much as I do. I, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm proud of how it turned out. Like I said, it's been well more than a year coming of, of testing resins, prototyping, um, over and over figuring out the gas and permeability issue, all those, all those things that I really needed to, to accomplish. So it's something that I'm really happy to finally announce. Even though it looks like, you know, like a little small detail added to one of our pens, it's, 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 a, it's a pretty big undertaking for us. And so we're, we're really happy with how it came out. Um, the, the, the cost, uh, the spiral ink window will add 100 to the cost of a normal draw filler, in this case a Menlo draw filler. So, you know, a, a conventional Menlo draw filler with a steel nib and a regular ink window or an ink view barrel is 375. So with a steel nib, these, you know, adding the spiral ink window will put that at 475. Um, I won't get into all the details about the labor involved, but it's literally about four times the amount of labor uh, to do this with a barrel than to do a conventional ink window. If anybody wants me to, to expand on all those details as to why, I'll be happy to, but it does create a lot more labor. We're going to add a hundred of the price to do this. Um, if anybody has any questions, please leave them in the comments of wherever you're watching this. Shoot me an email, brian at edisonpen.com, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. But uh, please uh, give me your thoughts on this. Like I said, I'm very happy and I'm very proud of this. So uh, thank you for watching. If anybody has any questions, as I said, please contact me, okay? Thank you.